So I'll make a start and we'll just bring ourselves and be still before God and settle ourselves into our chairs. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and one mind. We come into this time and space to offer ourselves, our time and these moments of stillness to God. We leave aside for this while our cares and concerns our fears and frustrations or if we cannot lay them aside we bring them with us into this space and offer them to God as we rejoice in this gift of the new day we met so may your light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Light our candle. We light this candle as a symbol of our faith and hope for our future. We trust in the alchemy of the Holy Spirit to bring her dream to life amongst us, here amongst us. Gather your people, O oh God, that your dream for us may come true. Amen. So, if you are going to read along with us today, um, I've put it in the description of this video. So, we're reading Psalm 10, 1 to 12, and Mark 15, 40 to 47. Why, Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourselves in time, yourself in time of times of trouble? In his arrogance, the wicked man hit, hunts down the weak, who are caught in the schemes he devises. He boasts about the cravings of his heart. He blesses the greedy and reviles the Lord. In his pride, the wicked man does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. His ways are always prosperous. Your laws are rejected by him. He sneers at all of his enemies. He, had, he says to himself, nothing will ever shake me. He swears, no one will ever do me harm. His mouth is full of lies and threats. Trouble and evil are under his tongue. He lies in wait near the villages. From ambush he murders the innocent. 
his eyes watch in secret for his victims. Like a lion in cover, he lies in wait. He lies in wait to catch the helpless. He catches the helpless and drags them to off in his net. His victims are crushed. They collapse. They fall under his strength. He says to himself, God will never notice. He covers his face and never sees. Arise, God, lift up your hand. O oh God, do not forget the helpless. It's quite heavy. Did anything jump out to anyone? Oh. It's quite dark imagery in this one. Okay, so I'm going to move on to our gospel. If that's okay. So we continue with our journey through Mark. And Mark 15, 40 to 47. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, M Mary the mother of James the younger, and of Joseph and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. It was preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus was already had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph brought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in the linen, and placed it in the tomb. Placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled the stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. Sorry, Yvonne, it's only just come through. So, looking back to our psalm. Hmm. Yeah, the imagery of them um, in the, in our psalm. I would do like a good Christian mystic theology. Helps you untangle all sorts of um, gems. Mm. 
It's a hard one to read, isn't it, with all of the um, uh, the energy that arises. But it's good to sit with that imagery as well. Thank you, Tom. Through all the struggles, yeah. And life that we all Hindsight is very much 2020 vision sometimes, isn't it? You can look back and go, oh. <laughs> that healing that comes with sitting with the situation you shouldn't feel stupid not at all so um, when I first read our gospel this morning um, I automatically went, ah, because um, if you joined us on Sunday for St. Bride's Day and Joseph of Arimathea seemed to appear, on the, uh, so we, we lit the candle with the holy thorn um, of Joseph of Arimathea. Oh, sorry, some comments coming through, oh, sorry. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. We'll go back to our song, I'm sorry, and then we'll go back to our song. I'll um remember to sit with each text a little bit longer next time. I'm sorry if I've uh, jumped ahead there. Where does it stand out in the psalm? Hear the desire of the afflicted and encourage them. Yeah. Morning, and St. Luke in the city parish, Liverpool. we go to our gospel yeah that's something that jumped out to me as well Kat that wanting clarity that he was actually dead um, I think with the with the death like a crucifixion it is um, a particularly drawn out one mm. It was six hours. <laughs> I 
think it, it can be drawn out, can't it? With, um... the, the way that the crucifixion is set up is meant to be drawn out for days, I think. Yeah, Pilate is doubting, isn't he? He's very like, where are we? Hmm. Pilate was surprised to hear he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion, so, so he's asking the authority to, to go and check. Um, and they want in his body. Joseph of Arimathea has such an important role in this situation as well. And it's also the emphasis on women um, at the very beginning. You know, Mary Magdalene is named Mary, mother of James. So at the beginning of our text, they get named, and at the very end, Mary Magdalene and Mary, mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid, and they're also the first people to see him resurrected as well. Mm. Yeah, we explored that on Sunday, Vivian, with um, the St. Bride's Day service. Um, and St. Bride has a, a newly painted picture of Joseph of Arimathea visiting Glastonbury, which we didn't know about until, well, I didn't know about until we went in. Mm. That is a good point. The, the, where are the male disciples? I think, um, I don't know if, well, Joseph of Arimathea. Um, was the collecting of the body, was that more of a woman's job? Um, I'm unsure. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, potentially have just fled because they don't want to face the scene. Mm. Mm hmm the women are like front line dealing with the messiness of the situation and they're not you know they're there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thanks Vivian You know, the, the task of the death rituals of washing the body and wrapping it in linen and making sure that's that's quite a um, that's quite a task and for that to be done. You know, to ask for his body as well, it was just, you know that loyalty and that love and done with such care. The picture of um, Joseph of Arimathea, um, which was painted by um, Leroy, um, I've posted that on the St. Luke in the City Facebook page and we did that on Sunday, so I can tag you in it if you want.
Yeah, throughout markets, usually just the headline news information. It doesn't go into much details, but this, you know, the intimacy of the story and how you know, it was washed and that it is slowed down with more detail. Mm -hmm. Every Easter there's always something different this time around. Well, preparation for Lent, I should say. Mm -hmm. The women witnessed to where he was laid. Mm -hmm. The closing of the tomb. And the rituals of laying him to rest. Yeah, this is before the um mm -hmm. Okay. No, it's closing the tomb and then allowing the, the grieving process to begin. Thank you everyone. So we will now move into a time of our intercession with prayers. Um, I will start praying and as always please pray in the comments as we can all pray with one heart and one mind. And just take a moment to settle ourselves what we've read, what we've discussed. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to meet as a community online, to gather and discuss your word, Lord. Gracious God, as we prepare for this time of Lent, the texts that we're going through and the dark subject matter that we are discussing and tackling and approaching, we pray for your guidance. We pray for the story of your son's burial, and resurrection Lord in this coming few weeks as we gather to reflect on that. And we pray for our churches and all of our communities that are finding new ways to commemorate Ash Wednesday this week in particular and all of the creative opportunities that have come out of lockdown, celebrating the anointing of ashes and remembering your sacrifice, Lord.
Can you pray for Sue? peace at this time of sadness. We pray for them to be held, Lord. For their strength, for knowing that you hold them, Lord. As we walk a day at a time through these uncharted waters, Lord. Pray and give thanks for the diocese's directions calls, for those exploring vocation, ministry and calling. We pray for fruitful conversations and the gift of the online platform to facilitate them and making them accessible to those who maybe would struggle finding uh, time to travel in. Mm. Mm. We pray for those in Hong Kong on Chinese New Year today, for their families, for how different celebrations are going to look. all of those the ancestry of pain and just pray for them and hold them up in prayer Lord and we pray for Marion and she struggles with loss Grief, Lord. May the Lord hold her in his hands. And we pray for the work in the community of St. Luke in the city. For all that we are, for the conversations, for the, the team, the lay and ordained team that work the scenes. Yeah, sharing and learning together. I like that. Thanks everyone. Mm -hmm. And this week of Ash Wednesday for all of the, yes, creative responses. To receive an ashes at a time that touch is not possible. The community still remains. Hmm. We pray for our school communities, for our education environments, and come into half ten. This time where the new academic term looks so uncertain. We pray for the exhaustion. And the anxiety that may still be there and very much there. Lord. We lift them up.
Mm -hmm. Okay, so seeking for love and justice. In your kingdom and as a society. Heavenly Father, we pray and lift up for those key workers, for those on the front line. Those working in hospital environments, the research departments, caring for the sick and the dying. After so many months, Lord, we pray for their strength and their mental health capacity, Lord. We pray that they get their own support and know how to help themselves through it and know their support and their support groups. We pray for our chaplaincies and our well-beings and departments assisting in all that hurt and all of that grief Lord. We pray for all those who have lost, all those lives lost. The numbers that we see on the news, the statistics, and remember that there's a grieving family left behind. For each and every one, we pray and lift up these uncharted waters, Lord, with great love. Make yourself known, Lord, to those who are struggling. So many. Mm. Friends for Hugh, Auntie Marjorie, Auntie Yvonne, Paul, may the Lord wrap his arms around you. Gently. And we pray at this time for our student communities, Lord, for our universities in the city. For the huge number of students who have returned to Liverpool. For the huge number that have excitedly applied for university starting in September. For that optimism, Lord. For that excitement. For that drive. And that resilience. We pray especially for this time those who are struggling, who may still be struggling and not know where to turn for assistance. For our international students who feel so far away from the communities and their families. We pray for that outreach, those conversations, the wellbeing departments over the universities, and the assistance that the chaplaincy are giving and can still give. To our student bodies, for the support to meet their needs and their grief, Lord. The conversations this week with our wellbeing team and that engagement in what chaplaincy has to offer. 
constant support of the students and the staff who are all struggling in their grief, whatever that looks like for them. And we pray for this week ahead and those conversations to be fruitful. We pray this month, these coming weeks, for the LGBT History Month, for the engagement and conversations of different societies who maybe would not ordinarily engage with chaplaincy for the step, the baby steps taken for those conversations, for these massive amount of resources for our young people in particular who may be struggling with their faith, their gender or sexual orientation, identities as they find themselves. We pray and give thanks for our archbishops, bishops and all clergy and lay peoples this place we find ourselves in for those who are here to me and we pray for the time of rest and self-care particularly for our clergy and to know their cut off points for them to know their rest We pray for the work of Student Christian Movement Board, the SCM, and their outreach in supporting chaplaincies and churches, chaplaincies and churches, and their fruitful and joyous um, um, online activities, starting conversations young progressive Christians in particular and supporting them. And we pray for Elizabeth, Eliza, Alison, Kay, Chris, Kelly and Jules for Paul and Ali as they leave their parish and move on to pastures new. Hmm. For Alex and Debbie as they take time of rest and healing after the operation. Pray for Laura. We gather up all of our prayers, all of those people 
brought to mind. For those in our hearts, for our own journey. We gather our prayers together for this day and join in the words Jesus taught us. Um, let me pray. I'm going to pray with um, Stephen Shakespeare's adaptation of the Lord's Prayer. Feel free to pray the Lord's Prayer and however you feel most comfortable in whatever language. Divine Mother, Divine Father, to be in you is to be in heaven. May we hear the wonder that echoes in your name. May we accept no rule but the rule of love. May we never tolerate the evil of hunger. May the hurt we cause be forgiven, and the hurts that we receive be healed. May we remember that we are fragile, and cherish the life that we share with all. For all love, for all love, and life and power is a gift from your spirit. Amen. Move on to our closing affirmation. In the circle of God's love, we are one. The circle is never broken. In the light of God's welcome, we are one. The light that never goes out. Let children teach us the wisdom of play. Let neighbours teach us the gentleness of care. May the circle surround us, so that surround us when we are apart. May the light draw us closer together again. Amen. Thank you everyone for joining us in morning prayer. Thank you, Ron. Um, so, um, we have a service for Valentine's Day on Sunday and for those of you who are interested, I'm part of um, the Student Christian Movement's panel for um, the LGBT student experience and that's on Facebook Live on Monday evening um, so feel free to have a look at that. Um, and yeah, Ash Wednesday on Wednesday, True Tuesday on Tuesday, it's all going. Um, I'll be busy doing a pancake cook along for our students on True Tuesday, so if you keep me in your prayers for that. Um, thank you very much everyone, it's always a joy. Um, hope you have a lovely day and if you can get out for a walk um, and you can get some fresh air and everything. Thank you so much, thank you. Um, and I'm also doing midday prayer at 12 over at the Facebook page for Chaplaincy to the Universities. So there is opportunity for prayer at 12 if anyone is interested in joining. Um, thank you very much everyone, have a lovely day.